improvisation is one of the things that I I'm involved with. You know, in my actual career outside of school, I did that a lot um, on a variety of different woodwind instruments. So I find that it's the most freeing thing for me. I like composing, but I always have room in my compositions for improvisation, so that so that the players can add their own personality to the composition. So it's not so much uh, everything dictated by me. Matter of fact, even in a lot of the compositions, until we get together, I won't put dynamic markings or articulations. I prefer to work them out with the performer. Well, Dan Dan plays a piece uh, that I wrote for a solo trumpet piece for him, and that's what we did. I wrote the piece, and then then I have the areas you know in mind where I would like the improv, and I have a certain idea of how I would like the improv to be. So we go over those kind of situations. So I'm still very much writing, but still leave room for space for the interpretation of the piece from the composer. It's a little bit more like the older days when the original, the way it was originally. I, I I'm thinking, well, I don't know. <laughs> what is improvisation? That's a good question. I mean, to me, it's the art of being in the moment. It's just that simple. I mean, everything's an improvisation. You know, how you're going to come to work today. There might be a traffic jam. Looking at patterns in traffic, looking at patterns and everything. It's like recognizing how you're going to get from one place to another. I mean, it's a very simple thing. The problem is, is that um, there are a lot of set patterns that people fall into, especially human beings, you know, or even everybody, all nature has set patterns in it, you know, but it's how you're going to change the patterns. I mean, I have a great story like a, you know, like great saxophone player like Dexter Gordon will play in a jazz context, will play turnaround on a tune, and maybe he has like five ways that he plays the turnaround, but you never know which of the five ways he's going to pick. So it's always fresh and exciting. And Duke Ellington will often use the same voicings for the turnaround on a tune, but he'll take the voicings and put them in a different place every time. So one time maybe with just uh, trumpets, maybe one time with just saxophones, same voicings, but it sounds fresh every time, sometimes all together, sometimes just trombones, sometimes just the piano. So you never know what's going to happen, you know, keeps, keeps things fresh. I like that immediacy. It can't come from the head, because when you're listening and you're actively engaged in that dialogue with yourself, everything else is passing by. So it has to take place outside of yourself, and you have to put yourself outside of yourself. It can't be about you. It's just the main thing, is that you can't be thinking about what you want to play, because the music moves in a linear fashion, and it's right past you. Even a textural improv, which may be more amorphic, moving like an amoeba, well, this kind of like organic shape, moving, 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 even that, if you stop to think about where you're going to enter, what part of the amoeba you want to be, that it's already the shape has shifted. You can't get back. It's not possible. You know, you've got to get out of the dialogue with yourself. You can't really teach it. I don't think you can. I mean, in a in a more set, in a closed form, like I'm playing on tunes, you can teach how you would like to approach the tune, how certain melodies and certain harmonic uh, structures can be unlocked by your own personality. In, in pure improvisation, like just a free, free improvisation, you can talk about then the energies and densities and velocities, and you, you have those added elements along with the regular musical elements. But you can't really, I mean, you can talk about what, what made it good and what made it bad. And the only way that you can really isolate these kind of problems is by thinking in terms of teaching composition. Because composition is just improvisation slowed down. It's it's just you working, working, working. Well, I like the way that sounds. When you're improvising, you don't have that luxury of freezing something because that the other people are moving. Again, so you have to be really very, very clear about it. So what we're actually trying to do is learning how to like like how to like perfect our our listening and our reaction to create something. In Western music, improvisation gets put into, especially in America, gets put into the jazz context because that's where we're most familiar with it. But almost every classical culture in the world, their, their, their original music has improvisation in it. 
Bulgarian music, what Dan plays Bulgarian music, and and uh, uh, I mean all the all the Balkan countries have improvisation. Indian music has improvisation. Japanese music, I'm not so sure, but it's more improvised in the way that it's interpreted. Uh, the original classical music had improvisation in it. That's where that's what most of these people were, were great improvisers. Then other people wanted to play some of their pieces, and so they started writing them down. I mean, it's really that simple, you know, but only, every culture has, has improvisation, and we're the only ones who really kind of, kind of take our improv out of the music, you know. So, and even still, some of the classical composers, when they write verbal instruction, if they don't give a, a clear... Uh, <coughs> A lot of the modern composers will ask for multiphonics, you know, multiple tones on single, single note instruments. And if they don't write the fingering, these people are getting an improv. That's an improvisation. Those multiphonics are improvised because we don't really have the, we don't see the fingering and what the composer wants. So whenever you don't see something exact from the composer, you're improvising. Your performers are improvising, whether they realize it or not. You know, some of the pieces by Christian Wolf and and Pauline Oliveros, where they have verbal instruction, you know, play a note, concentrate on that note, don't play another note until the other person plays, or, okay, there's no direction of note. There's, like, verbal instruction, and it's still a composition, but at the same time, there's a certain amount of improvisation and interpretation involved in that. You know, I'm not picking on those people, I'm just giving you examples. With Christian Wolf, they're early, uh, even uh, Terry Riley in C, you still have... A, you, when you follow the pathways, you can still pick whatever pathway you want to pick. That's an improv, you know, even though the notes and the, and the, and are, are written out for you. 